All right. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Heike Demster. I'm the Associate Director of Public Relations and Outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. Young Arts Campus is situated on the traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Chekesta, the Kalusa, the Taino, and today, the Mikusuki and the Seminole. We pay our respects to the elders past, present, and future, and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. Thank you very much for joining us this evening for this info session dedicated to the jazz discipline at Young Arts. Young Arts identifies exceptional young artists, amplifies their potential, and invests in their lifelong creative freedom. And the Young Arts experience begins with a national competition. We really want to encourage you all to apply. And um, once selected an award winner, all winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing um, connections with a network of peers and mentors. But before we begin the session, I just have a, quick, a few quick housekeeping notes. So these info sessions are being recorded. So if you wanna ask a question and you wanna protect your privacy, which we want to do as well, please um, identify yourself with your first name. You can also change your name on Zoom to your first name only if you prefer. We are sharing this video afterwards, the recording of it, um, of the session to people who couldn't make it this evening to all these potential applicants interested in jazz. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand, you can um, also use the chat feature. We will be monitoring that and answering questions throughout. So now I'd like to um, welcome Jennifer Toth, our manager of winner programs at Young Arts. We also have Javon Jackson, who is the National Jazz National Selection Panel Chair at Young Arts and a 1983 Young Arts winner. He's professor of jazz and director of the Jackie McLean Institute of Jazz uh, in the Hart School at the University of Hartford. As leader and co-leader, Jackson has participated in 22 recording projects that have included such renowned artists as Diane Reeves, Cassandra Wilson, Ron Carter, Kenny Garrett, Dr. Lonnie Smith, Christian and Christian McBride. His newest recording, oh, well, actually that I haven't updated. So Javon, I'll let you speak to the latest recording because I don't have all the information ready. Um, and um, obviously during his career has worked with many outstanding musicians, including Art Blakey, Elvin Jones, Charlie Hayden, Freddie um, Hubbard, Juan Carter, and many, many more. Gift and Jelen is a 2017 Young Arts winner in jazz. Pursuing jazz has been difficult, especially in the Bahamas. Since he's 10 years old, and Jelen taught himself to play the trumpet simply emulating his favorite records. After years of self tutelage bass player Adrian D'Aguilar began to mentor him, thereby providing him the tools to play jazz. Dr. Eddie Henderson. I don't know if someone has their mic on, is having some background noise. Putting yourself on mute, thank you. Um, he would study with Dr. Eddie Henderson at the Oberlin Conservatory, and the same year he also received recognition at Young Arts and the Betty Carter Jazz Ahead program. He continued to study at the Juilliard School and uh, graduated in 2021. After only a year, the trumpet has played with pioneers of the New York jazz scene, such as Curtis Lundy, Harold Mayburn, uh, Winnet Harper, Sullivan um, Fortner, Ben Wolf, and John Batiste, who is also a Young Arts Award winner. Um, additionally, the 20 year old trumpeter has received um, tutelage from some of the world's greatest trumpeters, including Winston Marsalis, Nicholas Payton, Rolf Peterson, and the late Roy Hargrove. His artistic vision is to pay tribute to his ancestors, as well as to unify others by incorporating universal human experiences into sound. So, there you have it, and I pass on the mic to Javon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, good evening, everyone. Good to meet with you, and good to see you. I, um, it's a real honor to uh, have this opportunity to, be, to speak with you about my involvement with Young Arts, and it was funny because it was who's who in uh, high school music at the time. So. People have reminded me that I was a finalist because I didn't actually <laughs> remember, but um, it's a great organization and a great opportunity for you as uh, students to audition. And auditioning is something you're gonna do for the rest of your musical careers. And a lot of the repertoire that you will bring forward is repertoire that Gifton can talk to you that you'll be performing with and, 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 and utilizing as uh, your musical vehicles. And 
this is the same process I had to use when I auditioned for Art Blakey. I had to learn material and I had to go on stage and audition with Art Blakey to get that opportunity, except it was in person at the, in the moment. So this helps you with those kind of opportunities. Uh, the experience is great. Once you, if you're selected to be a finalist, Gifton can speak to that. You come down to Miami and myself and two of the other uh, uh, panelists, we work with students throughout the whole week. And then there's experiences where we bring in uh, guest artists. They've ranged from Jimmy Heath, God rest his soul, uh, Rufus Reed, uh, Terrence Blanchard, it, the, the, Kenny Barron, as many artists as we can get during that particular week. They come in and speak with you about their experiences. And it's, an, uh, it's really an environment to uh, nurture and build relationships for yourself in your career for many, many uh, years and beyond. So uh, I just want to encourage everyone to definitely audition and don't even necessarily worry about the outcome. It's just about getting into the experience of performing and playing your instrument and uh, getting to learn more about yourself through through performance. So I do want to kind of uh, acknowledge Gibden uh, Jell and let him speak a little bit. He was from year 2017 and he can speak to the culture and what is done for his uh, life and the relationships. And um, really happy that he's here because he's one of the fantastic uh, trumpeters and musicians for our future. I just give to knows I was with Sonny Rollins a day for a couple hours, and I was telling Sonny about him. And, and Sonny is just uh, excited and refreshed to know that the the legacy of the trumpet is is going to be in good hands. So I just want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge Gifton and, and and have him share some thoughts he might have. Hey, appreciate the intro, uh, uh, Devon. Um, yeah, you know, as uh, Devon is talking about this experience for me in 2017 was one of the first times uh, I had a chance to really meet other young people that were really playing at a, at a really high level. and. You know, for me, I was coming from the Bahamas. I'm originally from the Bahamas. And uh, I remember being in that crew of people that I met, Morgan Guerin, Joe Block. Those were the, a lot of the people that now I'm either, you know, playing performances with or collaborating with artistically in all type of ways. And, you know, I would have never thought, you know, that these are the same people uh, that I'm going to be with, you know, from since the first time I met them in 2017. So it's really a big family when you uh, join this program. Um, and I think if anything, meeting Jimmy Heat was also a moment for me as well. And I really thank Javon and all of the people that were there that year, because that was one of the few times I got to actually connect with him, actually got to play his music, uh, you know, and um, it was really, you know, it was really a, a great experience. And yeah, and now, I think that through those experiences and, you know, going through processes in terms of uh, playing with a lot of people in New York City, and it's just, it's just helped me to push more of that music and keep that kind of uh, artistic seriousness alive, really. Um, sometimes I feel like it's a program, you know, and you can go through it and also learn from it, and it doesn't have to be your life path. But I find for myself, it became something that really uh, catapulted me in a way. So. Yeah, I think it's great. One thing I want to add, too, is some of the past winners have included Terrence Blanchard, Roy Hargrove, John Baptiste, myself, uh, Joe Ross, Julius Rodriguez, uh, Zoe. What's Zoe's last name? Obadia. Zoe, great saxophonist, Veronica Leahy. Uh, there's been some others. You can help me, Jennifer, if you'd like. There's a couple I'm sure I'm missing. But there's been a vast amount. And all those students now, I know that uh, uh, Julius Rodriguez just got a recording contract. I think Joe Ross is recording my old label, Blue Note. So uh, it's a network of, of musicians. And what I like about it, there's no um, animosity and there's no... Uh, uh, any uh, ego clashes when the students come by everyone offers original material and they play so much that we have to literally ask them would you guys stop because they start from the beginning <laughs> at nine o'clock and when all the other disciplines are in bed 
or almost these guys are still and women are still uh, trying to play music together. So it's that kind of environment. It's really inspiring for me, um, even though I'm, you know, a lot bit older, but it, it's inspiring for me because I'm still inspired and it's, uh, it's just great for us to transfer information for me to uh, feed off their energy and hopefully I can answer some questions about some artists that they have not had a chance to, uh, unfortunately didn't get a chance to meet. So I did want to open the floor up if anyone had any questions, anything specific about the process or some general uh, uh, perspective you might need, you can either uh, raise your hand or you can put it in the chat and we'll try to address some of that. Okay, uh, is anyone? I think I saw something. What are you looking for in auditions? What's your instrument? Uh, is it Ken? Where's Ken? Can you show your face? Sorry, you're on the train. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, if you, what we're looking for is a, is a pianist that obviously has good sensitivity, also has good, uh, what we call comping ability to support the soloist, obviously has the ability to uh, help shape the ensemble. And hopefully we hear uh, the tradition in your playing, whether it could be as far back as Art Tatum all the way up to uh, Chick Corea. So hear all of that kind of uh, style and, and a certain um, uh, maturity, which we look for. And beyond that, just whatever originality too that you bring to the table as, as an artist. As a pen, so I hope that helps. Any other questions? Javon, there was a question from Maya. She's asking, would you say that using Scott is important? Would I say using what? Sorry, would you say that using Scott is important? What is that? <laughs> Scott, sorry. Thank you, Matt. Scott. Scott. Oh, as a vocalist. I would say do whatever is comfortable for you. If you don't really scat, then just sing the lyric. Uh, there's a lot of artists that, that never scat. So I don't think that's necessary one way or the other. It's, it's whatever you feel can best represent yourself. Because, for example, I don't know that Billie Holiday ever scatted. She didn't need to. <laughs> so any other questions? Right. Are you applying? Are you are you a jazz vocalist, Maya? Who are some who are some of the vocalists that you enjoy, jazz vocalists or vocalists in general? You can say one or two or three. Just curious. Billy Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, sounds good enough to me. <laughs> okay. What's the other question? From. Is that Keeson? How do you think you should go about soloing on audition recordings? Like having your solo all improvised or have some planned licks or lines? Let me ask, I'm going to ask uh, Gibson to respond to that, how he did his audition, and I'll, I'll give some feedback. Um, for me, I would say that I kind of just stuck to making sure that Obviously, the people that are listening can hear that, you know, I have some control of my instrument and then also just try to really play the music in the moment because I feel like it's more important to do that than to worry about anything that's pre-rehearsed. So I think the more natural it is, the better, you know, the better it's actually going to come out. So I think if anything, uh, stick with what you stick with what you know that uh, that you're comfortable with. Not to say that you shouldn't like stretch out and, 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 and completely like rehearse things before, but I do think that we just want to naturally get a feel for what, what you can provide and what's your musical taste like, what's your sensibilities. So it's not even more about what lips you might be playing. It's more about, okay, how does this person play music, you know? Uh, so. I would say, you know, just play you and it will all come together. That's a great answer. I mean, as a soloist, all of us come from somebody else. So, uh, Givden, 
there's no question he probably listens to Clifford Brown and he's taking a little bit from Clifford Brown. He's taking a little bit probably from Miles Davis. He's probably taking a little bit because of his closeness with Roy Hargrove. But at the end of the day, he tries to play it Givedon's way. So I think what you do is you build your language and there's certain things that all jazz soloists do from Louis Armstrong forward because he was the person that was a, that gave us the language that we build upon. So there's certain things that we all do just so that there's a way to know that we're kind of, for lack of a better phrase, in the family. So once you understand certain things that all jazz musicians do, at a certain point you have you you have to be yourself. But sure, you're going to learn lines, but you try to learn them in a way that when you begin to play, they're not so much predetermined as uh, Gibson says, and that it can sound as in the moment as you can. But um, of course, if we hear you. And what's your instrument, by the way? The person who asked that question. Trombone, right. So there's no doubt you're probably going to play something. I'm going to go, oh, that sounds like J.J. Johnson. Or you might play something else that reminds me of maybe Curtis Fuller or maybe something else that reminds me of uh, Irby Green or Bill Watrous or Steve Ture or whoever you're, the folks or uh, some other folks that you might like. So I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to come through. But the influence more so than you feeling like you have to play some kind of solo because we're looking for a certain style or a certain person. D does that help? I hope it helps. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, some other questions maybe? I saw something about uh, there was a question before that was said, uh, is there anything you can do to supplement your audition? What does that mean? Is that ginger? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Um, I just meant, is there anything you could do to make your audition like exponentially better or, yeah. What do you play? I play alto. No, just play the alto. <laughs> play <laughs> okay, the alto as you. best as you can. Will supplement your, um, will supplement your audition. I don't think you need to. You don't need to play a baritone, or you don't have to uh, if you want to. But I mean, you don't have to do anything uh, beyond just play th the way you normally play. So we get a chance to see what that would be as it would mesh with an ensemble, if that makes sense. All right, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Were there any other questions that we missed so far? Yeah, Maya was just following up and asking. She's just confirming that you're looking for someone's personal style versus playing simply the notes, basically. Right. Well, as you we all learn the more we do things in any aspect of our life, you can't be like anybody else. As much as you may try, there's no need to try to be like anyone else. And the more you try, you can never manifest yourself in that way. When I first came to New York, um, and I still am a big fan of Sonny Rollins, but Sonny Rollins and, and Joe Henderson, so I used to get this label, Joe Nuke. That's what everyone called me, Wallace Roney, a lot of folks, Kenny Garrett because I love Joe Henderson, I love Sonny Rollins, but at a certain point, the only way I could be Javon was to dare to be Javon and let whatever that whatever comes out be, be me. So it takes time for all of us to find ourselves, some quicker than others, but uh, don't be afraid to play what, what your personal idea or your personal uh, feeling about something else is and don't um, feel like, oh man, that's not as good. And so when I joined Art Blakey, I was thinking about Wayne Shorter and I was thinking about uh, Hank Mobley and I was thinking about all these incredible musicians. And I knew Art Blakey had played with John Coltrane and Sonny Rollins. And so it was in my head so much that um, for a while there, I was a little trapped because I was trying to feel like I had to play a certain way to please him. And he pulled me to the side and said, I don't want you to do that. I want you to play like Javon. That's why you're here. So all of you, that's why you have your own opportunity, your own place in the ecosystem of this music to be yourselves. 
And I thought that was something I, I loved about Gibson. From the minute I heard him, he was very unique, including his clothing. He's very colorful, and he still wore the most colorful suit that we've ever <laughs> that I've ever seen at the concert. But I'm being wow. serious that the idea of really being yourself and I always felt Gibson had all these different styles, but he was okay to go for something and whatever he went for, he was okay with the outcome. Would you say that, Gibson, about yourself? I would say that's a question that connects to my experience at Young Arts because I felt that coming from the Bahamas at 17, um, I, I, I felt like I, that the, the other part of it in terms of being able to see the chart and you know be able to like play exactly what's written. I think that was one of the areas that I learned from being at Young Arts and you know and people like you pushing me. Um, and I find that the other aspect of it was natural and I could be myself and you guys encouraged me to be myself. So I never felt like I couldn't be, you know. For a bass audition, should I play melody in any type of tune, fast, blues, or ballad? And can I have a saxophone as well for melody or just a piano and drums? All of that. If you want to have a saxophone, play the melody. But if it's your audition, we'd love to hear you play Billy's Bound. So we'd love to hear you play whatever melody that you, if you want to do tricketism, obviously we'd like to hear you play the bass melody. Because uh, as you know, the basses can function in some arrangements as the lead voice. So you should do a little bit of both. Play, maybe play the melody. If it's a blues, play the melody. And then uh, the saxophone can double the melody with you and then walk a little bit then uh, take a solo and um, then you can take it out and uh, you can do you can do it fast or you can do it medium I don't I don't worry about so much tempo I would as much as the content of what what you're trying to play because it can be a ballad which is the hardest thing to play anyway so you can do that and 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 make a statement there but obviously you do want to show some variance in terms of a, as a walking basis that you can play uh, temples, which is important for accompaniment. Lois, majors, that makes sense? I hope. For piano audition, this is Adam. Can you use backing tracks like iReal Pro or do you have to record with live musicians? Well, let me ask you, Adam, do you play better with musicians or you play better with iReal Pro? <laughs> That's with musicians, so you should audition with musicians. <laughs> Whatever's going to help. Now, if you, I'm being funny. If you can't find musicians, but hopefully in your school you would be able to find some peers. Or what city are you in, Adam? Maplewood, New Jersey. I'm from, I lived in West Orange. There's all kinds of musicians around there. <laughs> Go tell Christian McBride to do your audition. He lives over, no, I'm just kidding. But no, I mean, I know that, are you part of the, um, what's Christian's, um, the program that his wife spearheads? Are you, are you involved in that program? Uh, Jazz House Kids, right. Somebody, are you, are you involved with that? There's so many great musicians in New Jersey. I can't believe you can't find a trio, but it, yeah. But if, if you, you may use a backing track, whatever is most comfortable for you. But even if you want to do audition, possibly with this you and a bassist or you and the pianist or you and a, a bass and piano or, or however you want to do it. But I've seen, I don't always recommend it, but I've seen there was a bassist one year. I forget his name. He's at Oberlin now. And I think he auditioned just him and a drummer. Do you happen to know him? I think he's left-handed too. He's at Oberlin now, Gibson. Really? Uh, is he a freshman over there? Yeah, I think so. He's great. Mm -hmm. he plays like Charlie Hayden. But again, as, as uh, Jennifer said, whatever you feel is most comfortable for you, I just feel like it's it's maybe good to think about musicians because in general, we present this music with other musicians. I mean, you wouldn't get, if I gave you a gig in uh, in New Jersey, 
you would get more musicians. You wouldn't bring a real a iReal Pro to the gig. So think of it that way. So now you have a lot of time to prepare for that opportunity since we're in July. Did I miss anything, Jennifer? Some more questions? Yeah, Maya had a question. She said, are there any songs that you would say shouldn't be used for an audition or any songs that are overused? No, I don't think there's any song that that I would say stay away from. Just make sure the song that you play is something that you feel personally comfortable with. Don't say, well, let me impress them with Countdown. But you don't know Countdown that well, then just play Tune Up, <laughs> right? Because if you don't know those uh, countdown changes or these some of these other more advanced chords, if you're not in advanced that way, uh, play the, the piece of music that you feel can best help you uh, display your um, strengths. Does that make sense? And so now that we, you know that the audition process begins in the fall and it's July, whether you can pick maybe something that might be a little bit more... Um, What's that? Conception. If you want to pick a piece like that, okay, now you have time to work it up. And then by September, October, when you want to audition, then you're ready. I just feel like you just take the time to uh, prepare properly. I don't know. Give them, what did you audition with? Do you remember? Um, so I remember for me, I did uh, I Hair Rhapsody and I did uh billy's bounce and i did uh there was one that was a mandatory one which one which one was that do you remember this one well billy's bounce is billy bounce or um is that is blue Dito one of the other ones yeah i did i did billy's bounce and probably confirmation I don't don't quote me on that, but um, I for sure I think I Hear Rhapsody was the one that I chose because I grew up playing that song um, with my mentor Adrian Dragler in the Bahamas, so it's something that was really comfortable, and I felt like you know why not you know so definitely stick with something that feels comfortable, something that feels like home, you know. Absolutely, and obviously a great ballad to get a chance to. Uh demonstrate your tone and your phrasing again ballads are the toughest thing to do and i think it's great to uh get that to come across which is i think that's one of the criteria of the ballad i'm pretty sure it's a, some kind of standard a ballad and then again something maybe that kind of pushes the limits or pushes the boundaries in terms of uh, something a little bit of advancement but you can push the boundaries with rhythm changes right you can push the boundaries with what is this thing called love? It doesn't have to be uh, uh, something like uh, you know, four by five, you know, McCoy Tyner. Again, think about things that you feel comfortable and you can develop and you relax at that moment to play it. Because the one thing you don't want it to be is stressed out when you're performing. I assume everyone will be applying or auditioning, correct? Hopefully. Oh, about how many vocalists do you have each year? Uh, so I think, sorry, if I jump in there, this is Heike. And because Maya is clearly applying in jazz voice, which is the voice discipline. So this info session was really organized to address jazz instrumental. Um, so I would love for Maya to reach out to me so I can organize a chat with her with someone from the jazz voice, like a past winner, so we can get you some really great answers that are really specific to the jazz voice um, category under the voice discipline. So we can answer all your great questions uh, correctly. Um, but things that still stick around because so much what Javon is saying about being yourself and all of that applies to all the artists equally, right? Um, and yeah, otherwise, I think, I mean, we can also get a little bit into what, um, if, if Jen wants to talk a bit more about what winners receive once they become part of the Young Arts community, I think that would be wonderful for all the participants to know as well, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, so every year, 
the applicants, um, if you are awarded um, by um, the panel, you will land within one of three categories. You'll either be mentioned as a merit winner, an honorable mention winner, or a finalist. And so there's a monetary award that comes along with the honorable mention and merit award and the finalists um, at the finalist level, they are invited to attend National Young Arts Week, which is um, a program that J Javon would head up for the jazz musicians. Um, and so National Young Arts Week is a program for the finalists to um, collaborate with their peers, um, and develop their craft and meet, you know, fed fellow um, high caliber peers um, of their age, which, you know, you might not get to do when you're in high school or in college. It's an incredible opportunity to network and meet incredible guest artists and you get to be mentored by Javon and his two colleagues um, for seven days. This year, we're hoping to be in person. Um, we've successfully done it virtually, as we've successfully done other programs virtually, but we're hoping to be back in person in Miami this year. Um, and if you're given the award of any three, of either of the three levels, you are still forever in the young arts community. You are what we consider alumni. You are invited to attend programming, to further your craft, to gain professional development, um, to stay involved, and you get to continue to work alongside fellow winners. We have an incredible platform called Young Arts Post, and it's basically Instagram or Facebook for you. And that's where we list all of our opportunities, our programs, um, our professional development series, our mentorship series. We also have very specific awards per discipline. Um, and so things like that are all listed on our Young Arts um, portal. We also, the past several years, have been giving out micro grants. So if you are if you have personal projects and you're developing your own craft and you have your own goals, um, we have small monetary grants that we award every month to past winners, which is really exciting and another wonderful benefit of being an alumni. Um, but you know, a lot of this information is available on our website. Our website is pretty robust. And if you, I think it's under the programs um, tab, you'll get to learn a lot more about what it means to become a young arts winner. Um, I think something that Javon, you might be able to help with is, I guess, answering what it means to be named a merit winner, an honorable mention winner, and a finalist. Like maybe the what the difference might be. I, I know it's really tight, and it's so sometimes so close to decide if someone's a merit winner or a finalist. But maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, and at the same time, I'll say if you are named a merit or honorable mention winner, and you're still eligible to continue to apply in further years, we encourage you to do so. So it doesn't mean that, you know, you're awarded a merit winner and you can apply again. Um, Javon will see your application again and, you know, watch you grow and there's a possibility that you might land a higher award. Right, Jennifer. And, and, that pro and someone did ask in the chat, if you're not a finalist, can you audition the following year? That is, Yes, as long as you're still within the age requirement. Correct. First of all, there's um, there's several uh, what layers to the audition process, right? There's two or three stages anyway before it gets to the final process, and the finalists get to that point, and then honorable mention, and then uh, merit. And so again, it's almost if you look at it as say maybe one, one A and maybe two or one, two and three. But I hate to put numbers on it like that. It's just that the uh, the competition is, there's a lot of talented young people like the people that are on this uh, Zoom call. So the, uh, there's no question in my mind the year that Givden was the finalist, there was stiff competition. And doesn't mean that uh, your career is over. It just feel just in that particular situation that year, 
uh, Gifton was, um, again, by the, the brass panelists that selected over that process, he was the person that was um, deemed as the most um, outstanding. But it doesn't take away from other, other outstanding trumpeters that were that year. So again, I, it's a tough thing because when you don't get something, you feel like, wow, I'm rejected, I'm not appreciated, but it's part of the process. And again, I just think auditioning is good because it helps you each time you do it, you become a little bit more comfortable if Gifton would agree with that. And auditioning is just being a little bit more comfortable with playing. And the more that you play in front of people, you're less nervous about the outcome. And so this helps you with just the process because you're gonna be playing in front of people for your whole career. The numbers will get larger. In this instance, it's maybe a panel. Soon it'll be hundreds, thousands. And so you just get used to it. And I hope that answers the question, uh, Jennifer. But uh, again, there is a, a it, the process it, from a large pool, it gets narrow and then the um, criteria becomes a little bit tougher for the person that eventually wins. And that's, that's the way it should be without getting too much in the nuts and bolts about, well, does this person have better technique or this person have a better sound? Does this person uh, have a better command of the jazz language? Does this person uh, have a little bit uh, more of a personal sound versus technique and all these kinds of things? There's, very, there's factories, factors, but the bottom line is it's the delivery. All those things work together for the delivery that each soloist is putting himself or herself forward during the audition process. Uh, if an application isn't selected, do they get feedback to learn what they can do better next time? Absolutely. We make sure that uh, we make suggestions or recommendations or just give some feedback on where we feel that you can improve or areas that maybe would uh, require maybe some 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 definite attention, if that makes sense. Okay, did we miss any other questions during that time? No. And the age cutoff is, is it 17? Or it's is 18. It 18. It's 18. You either need to be um, ages 15 to 18 on okay. December 1st of this year or in grades 10, 11, or 12, either or. Okay, thank you, Stella. And again, if I could give one piece of advice to all of the musicians on the Zoom, whether it's for auditions or whether it's for a career, it's really one word, listen. <laughs> Just listen to all kinds of music, even music that you don't like. Listen to that for perspective. Just listen, listen, listen to music. I think that's really important. Uh, to, would you agree with that, Gibson? Just listen. Hey, we got to listen. That's the only way um, my mentor used to say, Agent Dagler used to say, faith cometh by hearing. And, you know, uh, you want to build the faith to be able to become an orator of jazz, it's, it's to really listen. That's the only way it really happens. It's true. Well, I guess if, I don't know, if you don't have any additional questions, I would say thanks to everyone who participated. If you have any additional questions that pop up in your mind later or tomorrow or while you're filling out the application, make sure you send an email, apply at youngarts.org. Someone is definitely going to answer you. Just reach out anytime, anything that comes to mind that you have a question about and stay in touch. And we are looking forward to receiving all your applications and hopefully seeing some of you at National Young Arts Week in Miami. Good luck to everybody.